When discussing the remnants of Native American civilizations in the United States, most common artifacts to be mentioned are those of arrowheads, beads, or broken pottery, with the majority of remaining structures residing in the southwest of the country being buildings like the Pueblos, Adobes, or Mesa Verde Rock. The most attention given to East Coast structures being that of Indian mounds or burn cities, viewed as little more than flattened archaeological sites of a culture that once was. These structures in the southwest gain the attention of the common eye more as they are tangible buildings. One can enter with no interpretation needed to fully appreciate their former glory. Even on earthen mounds, one can easily visualize the buildings which once stood in their place. However, many others are not mentioned, not because they lack the seniority or even a deep complex history, but because they take a level of thought to appreciate their construction and the societies that once flourished around them. This is Juddicola Rock, and it's located in western North Carolina. Native American settlements in the eastern United States were often more temporary or constructed with materials that could be grown, gathered from earth and ground. This is because accessing materials like limestone or other sediments was not available to them, so the technology itself never had room to develop. Even if they could, or rather if they did, they will always face the risk of extreme weather like hurricanes or tornadoes. So why risk making large complex structures with materials not available in an area it will most likely not survive another 20 years? Even simple carvings into rock or granite would most likely disappear over time. Erosion occurs at a much higher rate in this part of the country, as the region is much more wet and windy, so it would also surely destroy any large structure with enough time. Right? Jundicola rock and its petroglyphs are dated to about 500 AD. That is over 1,500 years. Despite the unlikeliness of this stone surviving, it has stood the test of time, living not only through meteorological odds, but witnessing the Iroquois, the Cherokee, the Spanish Empire, the English Empire, the Union, the Confederacy, and the United States of America. In fact, the rock itself is theorized to be in use as far back as the Archaic Period, about 4,000 years ago. As there are soapstone particles, as well as various other rock materials found scraped all over its surface. Jedicola Rock's purpose is not entirely known, but it's theorized to be a physical representation of the entire landscape the Cherokees inhabited. Now take a moment to view this rock, and think about all the history recorded on it. Imagine what cities fell and sprung around it, how many different groups of people walked by it, completely oblivious to its origin or significance. This rock perfectly summarizes how much history has simply been lost to time. Jedicola Rock isn't alone either. The United States Department of Agriculture in North Carolina has a confirmed number of 55 petroglyphs and pictographs, with many more to be found. Now imagine the entirety of the eastern United States, and for even that matter, the whole country. These are 100% generalizations, but they come from a base of real evidence. Despite a common perception that there are little to no remnants of Native American civilization in the United States, it is simply wrong. If one group or multiple groups of people can make and maintain such an object for thousands of years, how many more groups of people existed that never made any petroglyphs at all? And how many are destroyed by humans or simply to the progression of time? We may never know, but one thing is certain. Native peoples not only once lived here, but they undoubtedly left evidence that they were here. And I believe spreading the awareness of such keeps their legacy alive. This is Jedicola Rock.